This week, we saw Google Marketing Live 2023, uh, Google's flagship event for everything to do with their marketing products. And we actually saw a lot of that in Google I.O. earlier this month, but we had a lot more here. I think people were really thinking it was going to be PMAX driven, but there was one key component throughout Marketing Live that we saw at I.O., AI. AI everywhere. AI across the board. And we'll go through and break up some of these different stories and each talk about some of the new features coming. So one thing that was very interesting to me is that you're going to be able to create campaigns using conversational AI. I'm probably not ever going to use this, but I do think that this could be helpful for newbies and people that don't know Google Ads um, to try to help set campaigns up. Another thing is it might give you ideas. I'm assuming it's probably going to give you bad ideas for a lot of it, knowing Bard, but um, you can go through and there's like a chat prompt and you can say, let me help create my ad and it'll generate keywords, headlines, descriptions, images, and any other asset basically. One item I thought was interesting is you can get those assets pulled through and then you can ask for more granularity on something. So the example that somebody had was a beauty brand. Uh, the conversational AI, Google AI helper made ad copy and they went back and said, can you please make it anti-aging copy? And I think the big thing here is Google has dumbed down their ads so much with RSAs. There's like no creativity anymore. So for something like this, this could be actually very helpful from a time saving standpoint. When you have 25 characters, you know, like you can't write like you used to, like you used to be able to write good ads and Google doesn't want that anymore. They want fast formulaic crap. And this is a great tool to do that, you know? So, um, it looks pretty slick. I don't know exactly when it's coming out, but, um, it, it might be a help if you're need help with RSAs at least. So I, I, I don't hate that. And then the, the other thing that I really liked about this marketing live is everything seemed to be like AI assisted. So for this, they don't just say, we'll make it for you. Mm -hmm. It sort of cues it up, right? Yep. And that's what AI should be. It should be queuing it up and then you can punch it up and you can remove, you can add, but it should help you save time. And this actually might help you save time. So I'm, a, I'm the pro Google marketer of the year 2022, but this is actually something that could be helpful because it's not fully automated. It still gives you control. And Google also painted a more clear picture of their ads plan within SGE, which is Search Generative Experience. They covered this at Google I.O. And we saw ad units at Google I.O. living above the SGE experience in a different colored section that was clearly labeled sponsored. But at GML, the new ads will have a bold sponsor identifier, but will be kind of mixed in with the results provided in the conversational chat. But we still don't know what ad metrics data we're going to have from that and if there's a way to opt in or opt out of these ads. Um, likely a win for advertisers and upsetting for SEOs out there. Yeah, when I wrote this, I said, uh, uh, parentheses, cover your eyes, SEO, when getting to the example here. And we asked and tried to prod for a little bit more information as to like what the click-through rate looks like or what the metrics look like. And basically, it's an experiment. And like the most earliest experiment you can have, which is why I'm wondering why it's such a big part of this, mm -hmm. you know, marketing live event. Mm -hmm. They're like, it's, it, it's so early, there's no data. And it's like, I know that you know this works, right? You wouldn't launch it if it didn't work, but... Um, again, it's it's not even beta. It's like pre-alpha, an experiment within an experiment. Speaking of beefy, another update here, AI-powered assets that target search queries are coming to Google Ads. And Greg, you put this so eloquently in your coverage, um, essentially a more robust and modern version of dynamic keyword insertion. So advertisers will now have the ability to leverage query-based generative AI for automatically created assets mouthful. Um, using content from your landing page and your existing ads, so theoretically boosting relevancy. The example that they gave was for a query for skincare for dry sensitive skin, and then it generated a targeted headline <clears throat> titled Soothe Your Dry Sensitive Skin. So you could see how it's pulling in the query there, and it actually makes sense in that context. 
word of caution. Obviously, as you noted, it's not a universal solution. If you're in a highly regulated industry, compliance is not something you should ever sacrifice for relevancy. Um, you probably don't want to touch that if that's the case, but you can play with it and not do it you know, for everything because it will be applied at the campaign level rather than account wide. So this is great if you want to start small with your testing or you know, it might work well in some places and not others anyway. So I appreciate that more granular level of control. Um, it's in global open beta for English and there's more languages coming later this year. So I like that. Seems cool. People probably don't want me to roast this. I kind of love this. You had a good vibe in your article. Right? Like we have yeah. DSAs. They can work. We have DKI or dynamic keyword insertion. That can work. If this is actually making those assets at auction based on the query, like that could be cool. You, again, you can, never going to work for anything regulated, mm -mm. anything with <clears throat> compliance or anything like that. But it's – and you don't have to apply it across everything. That's right. the best part. Right. Like you can just be like, hey – Let's just launch this campaign and see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, who cares? So that's what I love about it. It's just another option. We're not forced into it. It's just something we can test. I love it. Goodbye, Merchant Center. Hello, Merchant Center next. It's being replaced in 2024, and they have a, that cool new name. So cool. Until it's the thing. It's can next you just now. call it two? Just update Merchant Center. Who cares? Yeah, we don't need... Yeah, it's, it's, it's too much. Yeah. But I will say that Merchant Center has a kind of an old, outdated look compared to a lot of the Google products that you see now. Everything is clean, simplistic, and sleek. Merchant Center is blocky and kind of old. And this looks... They call this simplified version of Merchant Center Next. I don't think that's the case. I think it's more simplified UI, to be honest. And so I asked them specifically, like, what is going to be changing? What's going away? What features are being removed? And thankfully, they said, you know, the features of Merchant Center that larger retailers know and love won't be going anywhere either. There are some caveats, like down the road, things could change, obviously. But um, that's 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 good news. So one thing that is being added looks like much better insights. Uh, in the sample shown at Google Marketing Live, there are tabs that now include um, an overview, the products tab that previously existed, competitive visibility, pricing, demand. Um, if you have a brick and mortar, you can see, and um, online presence, you can see store on search and maps. And then there's non-product website results. So I really dig this. Again, it's gonna be fully rolled out in 2024. And I dig this assuming that all the functionality is there and you'll still be able to like, get the granular product data and all that. But Merchant Center for, right now has room for improvement. I have not seen Merchant Center next live in action, but I would say, again, this is something that is promising. And looking at some of those, um, those kind of overview screenshots from the product, you can see quickly what's available, like what is availability and what has high click potential. So for smaller folks out there that aren't as savvy as us that might have 261,000 products in a merchant center, this might be nice for them. And some new PMAX updates also were announced. Google is releasing new generative AI tools for the PMAX campaign creation process. So advertisers can put their website in to Google AI and answer some questions such as, where will people go when they click on your ad? What makes your products or services unique? What's your brand personality? And Google will start to learn your brand and populate your PMAX campaigns with assets. So you can have it create images for you. Again, lots of AI in these announcements. One thing of note, so Google said there won't be an easy way for consumers to distinguish between real versus AI generated images. However, if a user is savvy enough to check the metadata, they can see what images were created with the technology. Um, Sounds like something we would do for fun, yeah, but nobody yeah. else. <laughs> and then there are gonna be two new PMAX goals. The first is a new customer acquisition goal that will help advertisers optimize for new customers predicted to deliver high lifetime value. And then the second being a re-engagement goal which will help advertisers connect with their most valuable existing customers. I like the the new goals. Anytime you get more options in Pmax, I'm just going to shut my mouth. So, are you gunning for that like pro Google 2023 Look, clock skirt? I am fair and balanced. That's one thing about me. I am fair and balanced. How dare you? I'm not touching that. 
This is not a political show. I am balanced and fair. (laughs) (laughs) I think the whole setup of putting your website in and being like, oh, you know, here's my brand personality. Like, what are we doing? That kind of thing. But some of those images look way better. Like that implementation where there's that cat with the um, logo overlaid and the yellowish gold, that looks cool. That's one of the things I have always hated about DSAs Mm -hmm. and PMAX is you know, you see a DSA and you know that's a DSA, but you look at this PMAX example and that thing looks cool. Like that looks like an ad. I don't know. I I, kind of dug that. So, um, hey, the more stuff we get for PMAX, the better. And I will say Google is listening. Like, yeah, if we can re-engage current people based off customer match list, let's do it. If we can go towards people that have a higher LTV, good. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm here for it. It's nice that they're acknowledging that those things are different too and letting you optimize one way or the other. Speaking of cool imagery, if you have a boring image, a busy image, or heaven forbid, a blurry image, you can rejoice. And you use the word rejoice, Greg, in your article. Twice. You Two thought articles. I wasn't going to read it. I did. <laughs> I did. Cease and desist. Also, good job. Great word choice. <laughs> Announced as well was Google Product Studio, which is a new tool that leverages AI to help advertisers enhance and create product imagery. It can do essentially three things. You can create custom product scenes. You can upload a product without a background, and then AI can do the rest with a few prompts. You can add like peaches behind the thing or whatever you want to do to make it more eye-catching. You can also remove backgrounds. So if you have a bad background, the generative AI can remove the content. So I guess it's degenerative AI. Oh. Um, And they offer increased resolution So if your assets aren't up to par from a pixel standpoint, Mr. Finn with the alliteration, you can use generative AI models to clean and crisp your creative. So that's cool. I guess if you have a lower res image, you can enhance it essentially so people can read it. The example actually looked really good. It looked really good. Like you could read the thing. I don't know. I don't know how well it's going to work. The example looked great though. I'm going to flip in a minute, but I love this. I love it. I literally already told some of my clients is like, Hey, when you're doing your product shoots, if you can just make sure you've got a a crisp one, white background, we just need that too. Don't worry about some of the other stuff. In this example, there was like a lotion. Yeah. And they're like, show me the lotion surrounded by peaches with a tropical background. And it looked great. It's on different Mm -hmm. pedestals too. It's on a piece of wood. It's on ceramic. It's on stone. It's just on the table. Like that's actually really cool. This is stuff marketers can use. And like that's why... I don't think there's anything revolutionary with this Google Marketing Live, but there's lots of nice things that you can it's do. It's revolutionary that they have practical applications. That's true. That's revolutionary. That's true. That's revolutionary. Because you still, it's your product image. You're just enhancing it. You're not like coming up with the product for you. Right. And with some of those examples in PMAX, it's like you, when you, where, where you're like, hey, can you show me like a bunch of fish and, you know, like <laughs> salmon and stuff like that? It's like, it's like, I don't want AI salmon. That's the last thing. Stop I saying want. salmon. <laughs> The L is silent. Like, this is like, <laughs> hey, here's our product. Go put some background around it. And then you can use that. Mm-hmm. And you can, it would be great if we get real results for the data on testing, but you can at least see like how it works a little bit. Yeah. So these are things that are like actually helpful. They're not, again, revolutionary, but this is something. Somebody with a small budget, though? Yeah, you can this then is just huge. Make, you don't need to go do a photo shoot. Yeah. And you can do it right in Google Ads. And this is what they should be doing. They mm-hmm. should want to encourage people to use the platform instead of jamming PMAX down people's throat like they did last year. So I, again, on this one, I'm very pro of this. Are you about to go anti or what? Is that next? So next up, we've got some new features. We've got seven new features and I'm not even anti on these. So one is that there's going to be brand restrictions for broad match. You know, broad match does exactly like its name does. It matches to the entire world basically, but Google wants it to work and Google has made broad match work. If you are not using broad match, you are not a good advertiser. Yes, I said it. Take it up with me at Greg Finn. Um, And so we heard about this before with performance max. I just I, I like any extra control you can get on these automated things. I know the future is automated, but having little controls and getting more things is an is a step in the right direction. This one's a little bit weird. Google AI is coming to smart bidding. Hmm. 
I thought there was AI already in there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, are AI and ML different? Because now, I mean, now I sound stupid asking that question, but I think they were synonymous until than this a point. Car, right. So yeah. this is going to be using Google AI large language models, right? Instead of like just auction data and what they think is going to happen. So basically, smarter, smart bidding is going to get smarter. So we can call it smarter, smarter bidding. bidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I dig that. And then. For RSAs, you're going to be able to see search categories. It seems like it's something similar to insights where not frankly that helpful, but if you are an advertiser that's a very remedial advertiser and you put everything you have in an RSA and you just hope Google matches it the right way and you don't have like campaign segmentation, this could help. And you might be able to say, wow, there's a category for, I think the other one was like dry skin or something. Then you may get an idea to say, I should make an ad group for dry skin. So again... I'm not going to use it, but it might be helpful. Another funny thing is, hey, do you not know what budget to start with for a campaign? New campaign prefills can give you suggestions. Just remember who is making profit off of all of that ad spend. How good are these suggestions? Because I never know what to start with, but I'll pick a number. So there's going to be more prefills in there now. And in the setup, this is something I don't like. Um, is there's going to be recommendations now in the setup flow. So if you don't know what a recommendation is, it's Google trying to shake every penny out of your pocket. You'll see things like raise your budget. There's no recommendation for lower your budget. There's things like add search partners. There's no recommendation for remove search partners. Recommendations are useless and pointless, but they're now in the campaign flow. So don't like that one. In Creative Studio, you can export Performance Max assets right into any of your other Google Ads campaigns. So I like that. If you see that cool cat yellow um, visual, you can get it somewhere else. So I dig it. And then there's going to be more asset insights. Not a ton of visuals on what that's going to look like, but any extra insights we get, I'm, I'm here for it. I just feel like the term insights is just so aspirational. It's just it's not data it's useless yeah what, what you get now i mean you kind of see a direction you yeah. know mm -hmm. it's it, correlation it's like you're you're in new york city and you're asking for a specific directions to sacramento and somebody points one direction i do that all the time people are like where you, where is that i'm like over there yeah it's that's useless what it, that's what, it's that's useless it for people yeah. but it's insightful like, how do i get across country oh that way, that way. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, there's improved search terms on the insights page. Again, these are relatively garbage, but hey, more is more. And I, I'm going to shut my mouth again on that. Last in the Google marketing live updates, Google ads is adding two new campaign types. The first being video view campaigns. So like the name says, it will help maximize views on your videos, combining a variety of formats, including skippable in-stream ads, in-feed ads, and shorts ads. To get the most out of your budget. The beta for video view campaigns will launch globally next month. And then the second new campaign type is demand gen campaigns. So these campaigns will leverage AI and help engage and drive action with consumers and will work across YouTube shorts, YouTube in stream, YouTube in feed, discover and Google Gmail placements. So the call to action will appear to simply send traffic to the site instead of leveraging the lead form assets it was qualified that conversions can be tracked with this, which is extra important when yeah, you're I hope so. doing. <laughs> and this is where I'm going to lose my mind. Because Good. when this came up on stage, I was watching it live, didn't know it was coming. And they're like, demand gen campaign. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. Yeah. This is amazing. This is what so many people need is like real demand gen. Like how can we help to remove some friction mm -hmm. in getting getting like emails and contact information? And then they show a bunch of videos on cell phones and everything is visit site, visit site, <sighs> visit site, visit site. It's like, I don't know if you know what demand gen is. I don't know if you know what it is. You're saying that I'm going to go visit a site on YouTube Shorts and that's demand gen? This couldn't be, there couldn't demand be. Demand Gen Z. It's demand Gen Z. That's what it should be <laughs> that's called. That's what it is. There couldn't be something, a product worse than this for <laughs> demand gen. Why would anybody in history use this? It's, it's, it's like, it's almost like Pmax without search 
in more video. And it's like discover with video, but no, I guess there is discover in discovery and yeah. there's discovery. It's so I don't know what the hell to Visit use anymore. Website though. When have you ever written that? It's so bad. Never. Like you, this is the, like when you're talking about how to like, if they came out with something and it was an interactive ad element that you could input your information and get that right over to it, like demand gen actually is, this would be phenomenal. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck this is. It's, they have lead forms. They do. Right. There's so no lead why, forms involved in this. And then advertisers will also be able to create lookalike segments based on seed lists that can consist of first party data and YouTube users that can be set to narrow, broad, or balanced reach. I not only like this, I like the naming of it, except for balance. I don't know what the hell balance is. Like I like the fact that it's, yeah. this is what <laughs> keyword should be. Broad, narrow, and medium. <laughs> right? Medium equals balanced. But yeah, I guess yeah. is uh, maybe balance. Like there shouldn't be exact, there shouldn't be phrase, there shouldn't be, broad can be broad, whatever. Yeah. But the fact that there's still as exact, call, just call it narrow. This the, this name I, I'm here for this naming convention that is used for lookalike audiences for match types. We should we should take that. Let's put let's make a petition. Feature request. 